Parallelli offre testimonianze e riflessioni con l'aiuto di eh, esperti, di eh, attivisti della società civile del mondo islamico per capire a un anno di distanza dalla primavera araba che cosa sta succedendo in questa tradizione difficile. <totipo> I mean, when it comes to revolution, I don't think that any uh, model can be replicated everywhere, right? Yes, you have the same reasons that can um, trigger the revolution. You have the corruption, you have the, uh, the bad economic conditions, you have political dictatorship, but each country has its own style in uh, uh, making revolution. However, Egypt can be a model in building uh, uh, some kind of um, uh, democratic state in the future, right? But this again depends on the the will of the political forces. To what extent they really would like to move forward to have genuine democracy that can include all political forces, all political powers, regardless of their views. That can uh, include secular uh, parties, that can include liberal parties. So Egypt, because Egypt used to have uh, you know a very strong and powerful regional role, if it will have real democracy, it might be. Uh, a very good example and very good model for the Middle East. I don't think that the, uh, the emergence and the rise of Islamist parties come as a surprise, no, for many reasons. The first one, that they have been working um, on social and economic and organizational uh, issues for, for decades. Second thing, given the vacuum after the collapse and the end, of the, uh, of the regimes and their political parties, there is a huge vacuum in the political scene. The only power or the only force that can uh, fill this vacuum is the Islamist parties. Right? At the same time, Egypt has uh, um, a traditionally religious society, which uh, if you are a political party and has some kind of religious ideology, you can find many uh, supporters who will vote for you. Right? So I don't think that the rise of Islamist parties uh, is a surprise, right? Uh, at, this, at the same time, we should look at the weakness of the liberal and secular forces, that they didn't, you know, do much effort to convince the voters to vote for them. And they have stru uh, uh, structural problems. The Egyptian regime over the last three, uh, three decades used to suppress and to, uh, to uh, put limits for the NGOs, mainly those who are working on the human rights and on uh, 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 political issues. Right? However, since the revolution started, I think there is um, an awakening and uh, uh, political activism that dominated the NGOs in Egypt and civil society. And I think over the upcoming five years, we might have a very strong uh, uh, political civil society who defend human rights and who can change the political awareness of people and to push them to, go, to be more liberal and more democratic, right? So we need to give them some time. I mean, we're still in the beginning of the revolution and the beginning of the transition. And transition will not be ended or not be finished within one or two years. It might take five, seven, or, or ten years even, right? So I'm very optimistic about the future, and I think the new generation in Egypt, in fact, will uh, uh, push the, the authoritarian forces out of the political scene and will bring genuine, a real democracy in Egypt in the upcoming few years. We always focus on Salafis, on the brothers, but we don't focus much on the military. The main obstacle for democracy in Egypt is not the Brotherhood, is not Salafi, it's mainly the Egyptian military who doesn't want Egypt to have a real democracy.